day starts with a trip across the river. We're thankful to see the river is not impassable as we thought it might be due to yesterday's rainfall. Soon we find this herd of Gemsbach almost right off the dirt road we're traveling on. They don't seem in the mood to stick around though and take off quickly. After a while we find this Gemsbach up, off in the distance. We think that it's possible there could be another herd just below him and that if we wait till he drops out of sight we might be able to follow to where he was and find the rest of the herd hanging out below that rise. I'm intrigued to see the Springbok following the Gemsbok. That seems a little odd to me. More about that later. After the Gemsbok drops out of sight, we follow along and we actually find the herd located to our right. We didn't see it at first and we spook it and despite what it looks like, we actually didn't have a great shot opportunity here. The herd takes off down the hill. Notice how they're all bunched up. They just do this really well to try and throw you off, it seems like. They progress down the hill and just as I think I'm going to be able to set up for a shot, they spook further and take off. I watch another opportunity fade off into the distance. It's a good thing it's just the start of the day. In truth, I'm amazed to be in a place where these animals exist and do so in abundance. It's awesome just to see them in their natural habitat. We hike back to the truck and we move to a different area. Soon we spot a smaller group of Gemsbach hundreds of yards away. We think this might present a better opportunity as they don't seem to be in a giant herd. We decide that we're going to hike closer and see if we can get in for a shot. There's five of them. I think let's take a walk and go and see. Our plan is to hike far enough around from where we saw them that we'll be on the opposite hillside and we'll be able to drop in at a spot where we have cover and they won't expect to see us coming. In a moment we think we find the perfect spot. We see a place where we might be able to just peer over the side of the ridge and see if the Gemsbach are available. It turns out that they are and we move as stealthily as our excitement will permit. We get into position. The last one. Good. The one to the right. All the way right? Yes. Shoot it. Nice. Yes. <laughs> now, it's gonna get done. Shoot the spring back here. Shoot the spring back here. Sit down. Kneel down. See the spring back here? Yeah. Come down. You got him, Jay? I got him. Yeah, I got him. I got him. what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I think that this box is done. Let's go, come on. Uh. Down there. Should we give it a half hour to go check? Yeah. yeah. Should we go check out the spring book first or should we wait yeah. here? We're gonna go slowly down. Get the spring book. 
and give the Gensberg a chance. And... Well, he was walking on that first shot. So. Yeah, they saw us. One cow saw us. Yeah. yeah. That was cool. I thought we were in trouble for a second. I thought yes. they're gone. That last cow saw us. Wow, that's crazy. So we uh, saw these Gemsbuck from a way off, and so we made a plan to come get them. So we hiked all the way around the ridge here so they couldn't see us. We got down here a little bit below them or on the other side of them, and then we snuck over here using the bushes for cover. And a uh, little herd of Gemsbuck this time. So a nice bull in the middle, and uh, made a shot, my first shot, a little far back. And then I had to put another one in him on the way, but as he was running away, I hit him again. So we think that he's just right under that uh, bush over there. And then we had a nice little cull spring buck at the same time come up <laughs> and got that one dead to rights just right there. So, whoo, great morning. Filled with adrenaline this morning. So I'm not sure that I got him out there. I haven't seen him move that drainage. No, I haven't seen him move Experience has taught me that after the excitement of what one thinks to be a successful shot, it's important to take a step back. I usually like to give an animal at least 30 minutes, whether hunting with a bow or a rifle. Remember that other Gemsbach at the beginning of the video that was hanging out with the Springbok? It was interesting for me to note that the Gemsbach and the Springbok inhabit the same territory and don't seem to be bothered by each other. In fact, when the Gemsbach were shot at, the Springbok seemed unfazed. This gave us a great opportunity at a nice little cull Springbok. So I'm glad it's stuck yeah, around. I there. We did see him leave. They have spotters up there in the truck looking down. As we force ourselves to wait for a few minutes, out, we're looking for any sign that we can right? possibly note and that might indicate Gemsbach tried to get away or sneak yeah. away through another drainage. Yeah, like we don't see any, and neither does our guide. So we think it's safe to go down and check. Maybe over there. Maybe like your... 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. It's gotta be right over there. Yeah, I think I see it. There's a white thing. Oh, it's not dead. Shoot him again, Dad. Unfortunately, a second shot was needed to put the spring block down. I shot him in the spine the first time, so a second shot was needed. All right, guys, this is my cull spring buck. So, uh, just great, awesome. You saw him up there, we had a chance to shoot him. What's kind of cool about these, look at the, the fur on his back. See how those hackles raise up? And they're scented also. So, their scent glands are in their back like that. So, that's so other spring buck can find him and see him, and also when they get uh, stress that comes up. But uh, awesome, we saw him up there, he was running away, and we nailed him, so thankful to be here in Africa. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We appreciate you, you guys are awesome, and uh, hopefully there's, there's more to come. Our guide drags the Springbok over to a place where the truck will be able to come and find it. We'll see if we can find the Gemsbok. Hopefully it's expired. I've heard they're trying to attack you. Should I have my gun too? The guide has just reminded me to turn my scope down and informed us that it's highly possible that an injured Gemsbuck will turn and charge the hunters who are approaching them. The scope was turned down so that I'd be able to find it in my field of view a little bit easier from a shorter distance. We spot the Gemsbach and nervously make our approach. Oh, 
Oh yeah, I see him. Careful, Dad. That is giant, Dad. Thorn. Thorns in yes. his head. Wow. Yeah, that's why they do running into the woods and get his back in and waiting for the hunter to charge us. <laughs> that's really? why I was laying like this. Oh, is this why he was, he was waiting for yeah, us? Yeah, waiting for us. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Yeah, he didn't wait long enough. Okay, take a look at how tough these animals are. Here's the bullet I'm shooting, 155 grain, uh, and this is a 7mm mag. So you'd think this would go completely through an animal. Take a look over here. That was 150 yards. 150 yards? Yeah. The bullet is actually right under the skin, yeah. right here. The second one, the first one, is right here under the skin. So I shot him first, kind of far back, he ran. And then the next one I put right to there. So the bullet passed through this side and didn't make it out this side, didn't make it out this side. That is a crazy tough animal. Can't believe how tough these things are. So that's what you get in Africa, a bunch of toughness. <laughs> This animal is so large that it takes four of us on the corners of the tarp to haul it out over to where we can take care of it. I am simply amazed by South Africa and the opportunities and the animals that it possesses. I insist on field dressing my own animal and the guides are more than happy to share with me their knowledge about how this is best done for their type of hunting and in their area. So do you gut them the same way for every animal? And then afterwards you guys go in and you get like the the heart and liver and lungs and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. yeah, skin. How long will it stay good in there? Three to twelve hours. That's incredible. Thank you. One of the things that impresses me the most is the fact that no part of this animal goes to waste. This scene right here might seem a little gruesome to some observers. But this is actually somebody's dinner. Every part of this animal is used. Meat, hide, horns, entrails, nothing goes to waste. I'm impressed by the consciousness that everybody pays to making sure that this animal's sacrifice was not in vain and is used to the best of everyone's ability. Through this experience, I have learned that hunting in South Africa dovetails into conservation that the guides and the outfitters are very concerned about the species that are hunted and are invested in their propagation for future generations. In fact, it is much through their efforts that we have this opportunity here in the present. All right guys, this is our Oryx, our Gemsbok. So happy to have it, so so great to be here. Uh, just great, great hunt. So uh, thanks for tuning in. And I uh, appreciate you guys watching. You're the best. Thank you. And we'll see you later. Thanks for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe.